Welcome back to Stereo 3D Productions. My name is Ein Crow and I'm here to help with making more Vorpex guides for this channel. Both the proprietor of S3DP and I love virtual reality gaming and we love Vorpex's ability to take us to strange new worlds. So we're going to make guide after guide on games we've successfully gotten to work with Vorpex. This is a massive project to cover all of these many games. And, in the interest of keeping each specific game's video as short and concise as possible, Stereo 3D Productions has a universal guide that will get you intimately acquainted with everything we're talking about. You shouldn't need a PhD in Vorpex studies to play the game I'll be talking about today, so relax if you're not an expert yet. We will be using the Virtual Cinema, which didn't get much coverage in the universal guide anyways. I've browsed the Vorpex supported games list more times than I can even count, but somehow I'd missed a key entry. Diablo 3 was on this list, and it just so happened that I had been playing the living crap out of Diablo 3 Season 10, so I excitedly went and wanted to see what Vorpex could do. Now I have to be honest with you, getting the game to work was not as plug and play as I had hoped. And let it be known that it was by the providence of Mr. Stereo 3D Productions himself that I found a workaround for an issue that we will be discussing later. Diablo 3 is the first game we will be featuring in this series that cannot be played in virtual reality. S I kid you not, my friends. Sorry, but you can't get down into the perspective of your barbarian or your wizard or your monk or whatever class you play and see splattered demon guts up close in first person view. Rather, we will be playing Diablo 3 using Vorpex's valuable virtual cinema mode. It's basically just like playing the game on a humongous screen, plus it's in stereoscopic 3D. Virtual reality headsets are ideal for watching screen-based stereoscopic 3D content because negative parallax, which is also sometimes called pop-out, doesn't require you to cross your eyes to focus on the image sticking outside of the screen. This was actually a major problem that I had playing Diablo 3 on a classic 3D monitor, but with a virtual screen and a virtual reality headset, the comfort level increase has been massive. All right, so hopefully, me telling you all of this has gotten your attention and convinced you to give Diablo 3 a try in your virtual reality headset. So let's get started. The first thing you need to know, remember, recollect, recall, and every other synonym for pay attention to this is that you cannot launch Diablo 3 from the Battle.net or Blizzard launcher. If you do, Vorpex will hook into it as if it was a game that had no profile whatsoever. That means no 3D, no Vorpex options, and definitely no fun. So here's what we're going to do to work around this. And I do thank Stereo 3D Productions for asking me to add Diablo 3 as a non-Steam game to my Steam library, because that is the basis of how this workaround was developed. We want to launch the game directly from its main executable, Diablo3.exe, bypassing any and all launchers. So there are two main ways you can do this. The first, of course, is to add Diablo 3 as a non-Steam game to your Steam library, as I did, and add a special launch parameter that I'm going to tell you about. So go ahead and add Diablo 3 as a non-Steam game, then right-click on the game in your library and go to Properties. Then click the Set Launch Options button and type in dash or minus, then Launch. Click OK, and then click the Set Launch button again, just to make sure that Dash Launch is still there set in the text field. Now, you're good to go, and Vorpex will load with the Diablo 3 profile properly. There's another way to work around this issue, and this is for those of you who may not have Steam somehow, some way. I don't even know how, but maybe you're out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a shortcut to the Diablo 3 executable and add that same launch parameter as before. Navigate to your Diablo 3 executable and left click on the file and hold it. Then drag it off to the side a little bit and press Alt on your keyboard. Then let go of the mouse. This is the universal keyboard and mouse operation for creating shortcuts to files. Next, right click on your new shortcut and go to Properties. 
See that target field there? We're going to manually add a space after the quotation marks and type dash launch at the end, just like we did before with the Steam version. Now, you can put this shortcut on your desktop or wherever you prefer to launch the game from. And yes, you will lose the convenience of the Blizzard launcher and not having to log in manually every time you launch the game, but things like this, such, such is the life of a virtual reality gamer. All right, so now you've got your special method of launching Diablo 3 prepared, your headset is fired up, and Vorpex is watching for compatible applications. It's time to get ready and get going with Diablo 3. Come on, boys, let's go. The Vorpex profile should take you directly to virtual cinema mode, most likely in the lounge room. We will be producing a more detailed guide to the wonders of virtual cinema later, but I will guide you through everything you need to know to get Diablo 3 running for you today. So you log in, you choose your character, and then you're amazed at a perfectly working Diablo 3 in your headset. It's probably flat in 2D, so press your delete key to bring up the Vorpex configuration menu and set 3D reconstruction to geometry. And voila! Yep. Nothing wrong here. Nothing at all wrong to see. Run along and play now. Chop, chop. Go, go, go on. Oh. Oh. Oh, I see. I get I get it. You'd prefer to not have those black bars covering damn near everything on the screen. Well, do not worry, because a solution can be found. Let's start with the basics. Press your delete key to get to the Vorpex configuration menu again. See that 3D strength slash scale option? Crank it up. Yep, just keep moving it up until the black bars recede out of the view. For me, running at a 4x3 resolution, the black bars disappear at a value of about 1.9. By this point, the pop-out might be a little bit more intense than you'd like. So check out the next option, 3D FOV enhancement. By increasing this, you can pull the camera up and back until you get what you think looks good. But be careful with this option because there are two potential issues. The higher you set the FOV enhancement, the greater the offset between where you click your mouse and where the game registers that click. I wouldn't recommend going above about 0.4. Additionally, those pesky black bars might reappear. If that happens, you can try to slide them out of the way by increasing the 3D strength some more. It really is a balancing act here, folks. The rest of the Vorpex settings are completely optional, so have a play with the ones you think might be relevant and see if they improve your experience. Since we're in virtual cinema mode, there's no mucking about with positional tracking or head tracking sensitivity or other nonsense like that. It all just works. The one thing I recommend is turning off Fluid Sync in the Display Settings section. Your VR-ready PC will run Diablo 3 on maximum settings just fine. No doubt about it. You could also consider decreasing the HUD depth so it doesn't intersect with foreground objects as much, but don't, do, don't go too crazy with it because the mouse cursor is also on this HUD layer. I found 0.6 to be a happy medium. And while we're on the topic of settings, I do have a few recommendations for Diablo 3's in-game settings. First, run it at a 4x3 aspect ratio so it's more comfortable to look at in the virtual cinema. You don't want to be swinging your head side to side to have to see everything on the screen. Diablo 3 is a peculiar game in that its resolution settings are grayed out except for if you're in full screen mode. You could simply run Diablo in full screen mode and run it at whatever resolution you want, such as 1280 by 1024 or 1600 by 1200. But if you want to run it in a window at a custom resolution, that's a bit more tricky. I'll explain how to do that after talking about the more typical in-game settings. So let's first look at the lock cursor option. Seems like a good option to make sure that you don't lose your mouse out of the game window when you're running windowed. Except, unfortunately, the lock cursor option does nothing unless you are in full screen windowed mode. So you have to be careful not to lose your cursor. But from playing, I haven't had too much problem with that. Disable letterbox, vertical sync, and disable both max FPS settings 
Vorpex will handle the frames per second just fine, so get rid of all of those settings. As for the visuals, I run with all settings on maximum and find no issues, not even with shadows. There's a shadow fix in the Vorpex profile, so you should always have shadows on maximum, high, smooth, to get good shadows. Okay, so as I promised, here's how to set a custom window size for Diablo 3. It's just so ridiculous that we can't do it in game, but whatever, oh well. So navigate to your user folder, Documents, Diablo 3, and open d3prefs.txt in your favorite text editor. Line 8 controls whether the game displays full screen, windowed, or windowed full screen in that order. We want windowed, so set this value to 1. On lines 15 and 16, you will see display mode width and display mode height. Set width to 1280 or 1600 and height to 1024 or 1200. These numbers are just examples. You can of course use whatever numbers you want. Now be aware that there are some other fields in this preference file that say display mode, but these two fields I've highlighted appear to be the ones that control the actual window size and windowed mode. Duplicate your numbers into these other fields like I've done if you have any doubts. And always, always remember, you have to set the preference file to read only when you're done. Otherwise, you're going to find that your window size is not what you wanted. Now that you know how to get Diablo 3 up and running with Vorpex, we'll close out this tutorial in the standard way, though I must say I'm at a bit of a disadvantage. The V-Score system doesn't really translate very well to a virtual cinema only game. Of course the FOV and head tracking and shadows all look great in this cozy little room. It seems that we need an adaptation of V-Score for games Vorpex can run, but only makes sense in virtual cinema mode. Rather than judging virtual cinema games as virtual reality experiences, I will judge them as stereoscopic 3D presentations being displayed on a screen like at your local movie theater. Plus, I'll be highly considering the game's playability in this format. Our V-Score is broken into two main sections, fixed criteria and variable criteria. For the fixed criteria, a game either gets these points or it gets none. Variable criteria can take into account partial support and therefore receive partial points. The fixed criteria for virtual cinema games are an acceptable 3D method such as Z-Normal, Z-Adaptive, or Geometry. If a game supports Geometry 3D, that is another fixed criteria. And finally, the usability of the mouse, because we want to make sure we can control our game properly. Diablo 3 earns full points for all three fixed criteria, and these have all been demonstrated early in the video, so I won't belabor the point. Our variable criteria are also very important to having a great virtual cinema experience. Do shadows and other special effects render correctly? How about the HUD? Can it be used without difficulty? And does Vorpex allow adjusting its depth? And it's very, very critical that an acceptable convergence and depth can be achieved with Vorpex's stereoscopic camera rig. Finally, we rate the subjective experience of how comfortable we could be sitting for hours playing the game in virtual cinema mode. I'm happy to report that Vorpex's Diablo 3 support passes all of these criteria with flying colors. The real-time character shadows are correct, the spell effects are absolutely gorgeous, and just about everything looks frickin' fantastic. There are a few annoying issues with the depth of loot icons and damage numbers, so I can only really give it an 8 for interface, but it's easy enough to identify and pick up the loot that you want. Diablo 3 running in virtual reality with Vorpex has just about everything I could ask for. I just wish the resolution on my Oculus DK2 was a bit higher, so some of the UI would be easier to read, but that's really just my own problem. The only way you'll find any unplayable problems with Diablo 3 is if you make the mistake of turning virtual cinema mode off and directly hooking into the game camera. Ouch! I hope this guide has been of use to you. If you want to see more guides, look at the top of this video's description for a link to both the Universal Guide video and the playlist for the series. We plan on continuing tutorial production into the summer, hopefully covering about a dozen titles total in the coming months. Until the next video, I shall see you next time.
Thanks for watching.